Hello and welcome to an All Humbleness, one of the most interesting videos I've ever released. In this one we are constructing an index component performance dashboard. I'm personally nearly daily checking how the components of an index are developing and there are simply no good or free resources how you can keep track of that. The cool thing about this video is that the framework I will show you can be transferred to your domestic index, so nifty, dax, footsie, wherever you are based. Before I'm going over the dashboard, very important request. Please do what makes me happy. That is supporting this channel, which currently is having, let's say, a bumpy time. So your support is not only appreciated, but urgently needed. I trust you and thank you. So enough trash talk. What is this dashboard showing? We have an input here, which is the performance period. If you pick 12 months, you have the one year performance. If you pick one month, you have the one month performance and so on. And right below that you see the top 10 performers, winners, and also the worst 10 performers, losers in this time period. So as an example, First Solar, so this is First Solar, was rising by 171% over the last 12 months. What I thought would be a nice additional perk is adding a chart of the picked winner and picked loser to take a closer look, which is done here. So you have a drop down and can pick one of the winners from the table above. So for instance, first solo and then you see the time series over the last 12 months and the same for the losers here. Before we are getting started, I recommend to check out a previous video I made on Streamlit to better follow along. I will link it in the video description. Please note that this video is not an investment advice and is for educational and entertainment purposes only. All right, let's get started. As you see, we need some libraries. Why finance supports stock prices, pandas for data handling, Streamlit as our dashboard library, and date offset makes it possible to subtract month from a given date. Next, I'm going to pull all tickers which are currently in the S&P 500, reading in a Wikipedia site. So I'm using pandas read HTML function, provide the Wikipedia link, then screen for the first table on that site and access the symbol column. So with that, I'm getting a series containing all symbols in the S&P 500. So let's transform that to a list. So we get a list of all stocks in the S&P 500. And the next step would be to pull prices for all those symbols here. There is an issue with that. When you are just downloading prices here, so using the YF download function, Streamlit, whenever you have an update, be it due to a user input changing or you're refreshing the site, then you always trigger the price pull again and that is very inconvenient and also very inefficient. A solution to that, by the way, would be to just work with the database. Problem with that is you have to maintain the database, update it and so on. So I want to go another way here. Streamlit luckily has a solution for that and that is a caching system. So you can just use a decorator on a given function which you want to cache and then Streamlit is taking care of that this function is not being triggered whenever you have an update of the Streamlit page. So how does it work? You're creating a decorator, use Streamlit cache data and then you define your function. So my function would be get data and then I'm downloading. So YF download, provide the tickers list and then I'm just starting in the beginning of, let's take 2020 here. So I only wanna have the close column here. So I screen for the close columns and then I return the data frame. So you're getting a feedback here, no runtime found and so on, not important for now. So here I'm calling the function. So storing that in DF, calling get data. And while this is running, so you see the price pull is running for all those uh, ticker symbols. While this is running, we are already designing the dashboard a bit. So first of all, we give it a title and I called it index performance or no, index component performance, performance of the S&P 500. 
or whatever you want to call it, right? So it has a title now. And we need a user input and our user input should be the performance horizon in month, right? So I'm calling that N, use streamlets number input, and then please provide the performance horizon in month. And then I'm setting a minimum value of one month and a maximum value of let's just take 24 months here. So we have a user input now and we pulled the data. So next, so we have all close prices for every single stock here. As you see here, columns are the stocks and we have daily data here. And next we need to do the return calculation. The return calculation itself is straightforward. You're taking the most recent prices, which are always the prices in the last row, and set that into relation to the prices n month before. So n is the user input, right? Could be one, two, three, and so on. So you wanna know the price one month, let's just say n is one, one month before, and then you set this price into relation to the price one month before. So technically, you would just screen for uh, the last index value here, which is the most recent date, would be the 10th of March. And then you would use the offset function to subtract one month. So you are at the 10th of February now. And what you would do is you would screen the data frame for the 10th February and check what the prices are. And then you simply divide the most recent prices by the prices one month before and you have your return. Subtract one, of course, after you've divided. Now, there is a pitfall which comes with that. How can you know that this date is a business date? There are pandas utilities which you can use to check if that is a business date. I cannot highly recommend that. I would use a more safer way. And I'm just using a simple trick. I'm just screening the data frame until that day and just pull the very last row. So what do I mean with that? I'm screening the data frame until, so I'm using colon here, until that day. So let me show you that. So that would go until the 10th and then I'm taking that day. So I'm simply taking the tail of that, the very last row, and then I have that and can, can transform that to a series so I can use it to uh, divide that. So the squeeze function is simply transforming a data frame to a series. So now you see I have the prices for the 10th of February here, right? And let's say, let me give you an example where you would actually need it because here in this case, the 10th of February is actually a trading date. Let's take, I think December was not a trading date. So 10th of December here. Let's apply that again. Now you see the 10th is not existent here, right? And that code, if you just would code it without what I just showed you, you would run into an error because the 10th of December is not existent here. So if you would take my approach, you would just take the 9th now, right? So if I execute that, change the month here to three months, you would see that I'm taking the 9th, right? So just a simple trick to avoid errors due to uh, non-business days here. Okay, so let's formalize our return calculation. Calling that get red for get return. This is taking a data frame and n, and n is as said the user input. So the, if you wanna call it like this look back period in month. And now I'm defining previous prices. And my previous prices are simply exactly this year, right? 
which I showed you. So these are the prices as per 9th, which is three months before the most recent prices. So I'm just changing that to N and I have uh, a series of previous prices. Now I need the recent prices, which is simply my data frame screened for the very last index here, right? So this is simply the last row uh, as a series. You can also, of course, you can also just take the tail and then squeeze again, also possible. It's technically exactly the same. So you could take the tail here again and then transform it to a series, also possible. Okay, we have our previous prices and our recent prices, so we can create a return data frame out of that by simply taking the recent prices and divide it by the previous prices and subtract a one. Then we have our return. Now this function should return me, return me, of course, my return data frame, but it should also return me the date which was used for the previous prices. Why? Because when you think about the dashboard, I also coded the price development for the winner and loser assets. And I need the date from which I cut the return series of the winner and loser uh, assets on. So I'm simply returning also my previous prices name, which is the date, right? You see it here. So in this, this case, I would just get the 9th of December and then I can use that date to cut my winner series uh, off. You will see that in some seconds, but this is why I extract the date here as well. So date and return data frame. So if we would call that on our data frame and provide a one here, I would get a timestamp and also um, my returns. All right. And now what I simply have to do is, so let's store that somewhere, date, red DF. So date is just my date where I'm cutting uh, my winner series or loser series on uh, later on. And red DF is containing all my one month returns for all S&P 500 assets. And now I simply need to order them here, right? So I need to find the 10 largest and the 10 smallest values of that array. And this is what I'm doing now, defining winners and losers, use red DF and largest 10 and red DF and smallest 10, right? And with that, I have my losers and winners. So winners first, you see here, this is first solar with a quite insane return of 27%. On the loser side, we have this, whatever that is, I don't know it by heart, but you can look it up, right? These are just ticker symbols, there is a mapping table for those and you can see what asset that is, which has a return, a one month return of 65%. Absolutely insane, right? In the S&P 500, followed by 46% for this asset. So, okay, we have our winners and losers. Now let's give the series a name. That's only a technical thing because um, if you don't, you're just getting, uh, in Streamlit, you're just getting a zero header for those two series. And I wanna have a winner and loser a header here. So this is why I'm doing that. It's, it's optional, it's just cosmetic. Okay, now let's create a Streamlit table of the winners and a Streamlit table of the losers. And then we wanna have the charge. So gonna call that winner pick, then create a select box because I wanna pick a winner, which I wanna visualize. So pick a winner to visualize. And then I'm just picking from the winners index here. So winners 
is a series, so the index are the symbols here, right? So I have those as my picking options here, so I can pick out of those here. So for instance, NVIDIA, First Solar, General Electric, and so on. Same for loser pick, same logic here. Nothing special, loser pick, select box. So I pick a loser to visualize losers index. And then I wanna chart here. So just taking line chart. And then, so what do I have to do here? So let's say I wanna uh, pick first solar. So I have to get the return series of first solar from my data frame, right? So I simply take the F um, of first solar. I'm getting my return series, but it is starting from 2020 on. And this is exactly why I pulled the date out of the re get return function. So I can just filter for everything from that date on. And then I'm only getting the return series for the previous month. Awesome, right? So line chart, DF, winner pick from the date on. Same for the loser pick. All right, and that's already it. So it isn't that much code, but it is a lot of value you are creating here, right? So let's get rid of some stuff here, which we don't need. So this is important, have to change that to an N here so that you're getting the user inputs. So by the way, just as a side note, you can of course play around with parameters here, right? Take the top 20, take the top five, or make it also as a user input, right? Sky is the limit here. So I have to get rid of that, get rid of that. Rest should be fine, no, get rid of that. Okay, let's save that and create a Python file out of that, simply using uh, the download function here. So I have a Python file here, then I open up a terminal. That's on my other screen here. Give me a second, sorry. So there is my terminal. Let's make this a bit larger, then type in streamlet run and provide the file path. I hope there was nothing private in there. So this is the Python file I just downloaded. So let's run it. Okay, streamlet is opening. And now you see it, right? This is the cache. Now it's running get data for one single time here, right? So it is pulling the data now. And then you see index component performance of the S&P 500. And whenever I change the input here, I'm immediately getting new results here, right? Can also provide it like this. So one year performance, actually quite interesting for me. First solar, wow, insane performance here, right? but also this one, minus 80%. So I find this very interesting and useful. I hope you do as well. So last but not least, winner to visualize. So first soda here, you see starting uh, 10 months ago. Now if I change this to 12, this is the 12 month chart. You can also pick the loser here and we have this one here, right? And yeah, that's it for the video. So I hope you found this as exciting as I find this. And yeah, if you wanna have more content in this direction, let me know below. Um, yeah, thank you very much for watching and I'm looking forward to see you in the upcoming videos. Bye-bye.